We've learned how to pass parameters to our SQL query using positional parameters. And in this video, we will learn how to pass parameters to our SQL query using named parameters. So let's assume we need to find user by their last name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a new method, which is going to be called find user by their last name. And my SQL query will look very much the same, except here, instead of first name, I will search for last name. And instead of question mark and then position of the parameter, I will use a name and it goes like this. We use colon and then we use last name, which is a name of the parameter. Now it doesn't need to be exactly the same name as my method argument here, but it does need to be same as the name I use in param annotation. So here I will use param annotation and the brackets, double quotation marks, I will use the name of my named parameter here. So last name here and last name here need to match. Now let me import param and it needs to come from org, Spring Framework, data, repository query. And this is it. Now I like using named parameters better than using positional parameters because in case of named parameters, the order of method arguments here doesn't really matter as long as I use correct parameter name. So if I were to select by first name and last name, so let me copy first name and edit my query where user last name equals last name and first name equals, and then if I were to add one more parameter here, first name like this, then I don't have to follow the order of named parameters used in my SQL query. I could first start with a parameter, which is the first name like this, and then last name, and it will still work. You see the difference? When we used positional parameters, we had to follow the order. So the question mark on one will be replaced with the first method argument and the question mark two will be replaced with this second method argument. And if we change the order of method arguments, then our SQL query breaks. With the named parameter, it doesn't break as long as we use correct name in the param annotation. Okay, so let's try how it works. I will delete the extra parameter first name and I will delete it from here. And now I will go and create a unit test. So I'll switch to user repository test and I'll create a new test method. I'll copy the existing one and I'll paste it here and I will rename. So this one will be find user by their last name. And I'm going to search by last name. So my last name will be Kargapolov. And I know this last name is because when creating records, I set the last name, which is Kargapolov for each record that I set. So there should be two records that match this last name. And then I will use find user by last name here. And I will pass last name and delete the first name from here like this. So the users should not be null. There should be two records. And the first record I'll get last name should be equal to the last name I used to query my database here. Okay, so uh, this is it. Let's try running this unit test and see if it works. Run as unit test. And we get a green bar. All three test methods have passed. So now let's try failing this. Let's try changing one of the last names to a different name. So I will change the last letter to a W and run my unit tests again run as unit test, this assertion should fail because we will have only one record found. So let me bring back my unit tests. And here we go. The find user by last name failed, which confirms our unit test is working and find users by last name function is working well. So let me bring it back and make sure my unit tests pass. I will run it as unit test again. The bar is green and we can continue. 